We are just a day away from one of the biggest profit stories of earnings season. NVIDIA is set to report its quarterly results, and we know the company's been growing awfully quick, but will it be enough to justify the huge move we've seen in the stock, and how will it influence the rest of the tech sector, given how much hype there's been around AI? Let's bring back Philip Peterson of IG Wealth Management with his take on the tech sector. First of all, no pressure, but <laughs> what, what do you think happens with these NVIDIA results? Well, I think they're going to continue to surprise to the upside or continue to deliver on what uh, Jensen Wong has been articulating out there for the last year or so. Um, they are the leader in, in this chip technology right now. Now, how long that remains to be the case, we'll see. We know that chips can be a commoditized industry, and, mm. and in the past it's been you know, feast or famine, but for now, they're at the top of the food chain. Yeah, and a lot of people during this run-up have called this the, the picks and shovels business. They've made constant references back to Cisco during the dot-com boom. And I, I am curious, as someone who has been uh, part of many market cycles, what do you think? I mean, this is, you know, everyone's talking about how game-changing AI will be. Uh, and obviously, NVIDIA's got a lot of demand today. But when you're trying to assess what that means for a stock, what goes into the equation there for you? Well, valuation jumps out at us, first off, with NVIDIA, because it is a rather expensive stock. Now, it has been justified with superior growth rates, you know, spectacular growth rates. So this is a company that is delivering. But you can't just focus only on NVIDIA for AI. Uh, we look at uh, the other tech companies to say, OK, who can monetize AI better than others and then who can benefit from ai and see their productivity grow and see their profits grow as a result of that so that's the real long-term strategy for it betting on nvidia over the long term i think could uh could result in some disappointment down the road when apple comes out with their chip google comes out with their chip so it's more who are the companies that can sustain that monetized application of AI. Right, because those big Silicon Valley players are leaning pretty heavily on NVIDIA, but simultaneously they're also working on diversifying their chip needs because they don't want to behold, behold, be beholden to, I, I would imagine, one company. Exactly, and, and with chips, it's an evolution of, of that technology. Right. It's you're improvements going forward. Right, so yeah. today uh, NVIDIA has the best shovel out there uh, will that last when everyone else is saying, well, hey, let's try and build our own shovel that's, that can outperform? And what about tech in general? Because it's been one of these um, leading forces in the market for the last couple of years. I mean, we're coming off a record high for the NASDAQ itself. Whether it's NVIDIA or other chip companies, AMD, Broadcom, even here in Canada, I mean, you look, you've got stocks like Celestica that had a huge move, and part of that was based on the AI thesis they were putting forward. How do you feel about tech generally? after all the momentum and money that's gone into that sector. Yeah, and here, in our view, it really comes down to valuation and results. Um, and tech, it's not a homogenous industry. Uh, there are many different types of tech out there. It's like, like you said, the, the chips, the, the hard tech versus the soft tech, which is you know the software that goes into it and, and other technologies. So it, it's almost a multitude of individual subsectors that you have to pay attention to. But here, in general, the way we think about it, if we're talking about AI specific, it's who has the long-term advantage to, to benefit from you know, the AI product productivity boom that everyone believes is coming. And, and we do believe it is coming. Yeah. Um, and then I guess if we were going to go back to our portfolio conversation before the break, and we were talking about material stocks and energy stocks and some of the bank stocks, if you're adding tech into the mix and trying to figure out weightings, how do you think about it right well, now? Well, this is, I think you center it on the United States. The U.S., I would argue, has the best tech companies out there, uh, and I think they will continue to dominate over time. So this is why in the U.S., when we think about it, we are uh, neutral our U.S. equity position right now because valuation is a little bit higher than what we would like. Okay. But there's enough growth there and enough reasons there to say, you know, we should at least own a neutral weight in Don't the U.S. Don't want to give up on it. it absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but that, that upside this year 
could come for the rest of this year could come from some of those other sectors we were talking about earlier. Well, we're seeing exactly, and we're seeing it come from. We're seeing a broadening of the S and P 500. We've had a broadening of the S and P 500 since the start of the year. This is a, as we've said, this is a healthy market. This is what you want to see. You don't want to see the S and P 500 gains dominated by just a handful of companies. You want to see participation across other sectors. That's exactly what we're getting. 